Hi guys and welcome back to another video again with the powers. I'm Jake. I'm Sierra. And welcome back to another video of Sierra Reacts. If this is your first time watching a video like this from us, uh, basically what this is is Sierra is going to be reacting to different board games that I have backed on Kickstarter and GameFound. And so uh, it's kind of a fun little series that we like to do. But today normally uh, we have a box in uh, front of us, but the the box for this was pretty big because this is a, uh, a pretty big game. But today, uh, the game we're going to be looking at is uh, right here, Kinfire Chronicles Knights Fall. All right, this is going to be the all-in uh, version of the game. Uh, Kinfire Chronicles is a campaign-style game. It has about 20... Um, hours of or 20 plus hours of gameplay kind of like a Gloomhaven ish um, what? This game's going to be 20 hours long well, 20, It has 20 plus hours of <laughs> scenarios but uh, you, can, you can put it down there from the top uh, so we have the base game uh, let me flip it right here okay so we have the base game here um, oh man um so we got the base game, and then we have the uh, the upgrade kit. So we'll go ahead and open up the base game. Um, now, what's really cool is uh, so <laughs> I know how to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So well, here's what's really cool about the game. Um, the game, like I said, the game is a campaign style game, like Gloomhaven. But the the cool caveat to this is it's not as long or as much setup as what a Gloomhaven would require, okay? And so that's why I, I backed it and I hope that you like it, but the top is actually part of the map. So the top of the box is the map itself. So we'll go ahead and show it to you guys like this. So this is gonna be your always game board. So you're gonna have all your, com like some components on this side. This side is gonna be all your components for your boss. And then you'll have a small little tiny booklet that you'll place in the middle here, and those will be kind of like the map um, that you're gonna do battle on. So that's what that's what was kind of cool about the game. And of course, this is magnetic. And as you saw what Sierra did, this is essentially the uh, top of the box here, just like that. And so it just magnetically pulls off, and you got everything you need right there. All right, uh, this is going to be the welcome box. Uh, so we'll go ahead and pull this off to the side temporarily. Uh, this is going to be the welcome box for the game. So this is going to be the map here, which with all the different uh, locations that you're going to be fighting on. And so see, kind of like I told you, uh, well, like I told her a little bit, but see the maps are not as big um, and they're not as... Um, they don't have a lot like Gloomhaven does. Remember Gloomhaven had the small little, um, the, the, all the little hexes and stuff like that. So the map and some of these, uh, the, the hexes are very big and uh, much bigger. They're not as small and so like you're just doing battle in these spaces. So it's not a giant um, area that you're going to be having to navigate and go around. Uh, there's this little quick start guide. Um, before you have the introduction of how the game works and things like that. Um, these are some punches and dials that you will have to fill out. Obviously, there is all the cards. That's a bat. So in the game... <laughs> <laughs> is it really? Yeah. That's uh, a bag? <laughs> that's going to be the bag. So uh, the game is going to use little chips. And so uh, they might be... Yeah. So the game is going to use little chips and that's going to like determine turn order. And so what's unique about the game is you'll have these little plastic chips and uh, you'll go ahead and put them in the, uh, you'll go ahead and put those little plastic chips in that bag and then you want to hand me a couple of those and I'll put them on the close up screen. So you'll, you'll have these little chips and each of these chips have characters. You'll put them in the bag and you'll determine turn order. So like for example, here's one. Uh, chip of the of the dwarfing character. Oh, I know my hands in the way, so that's what a chip will look like. Okay. So we'll have another chip. That's the front side. That's the back side. So these are what these little plastic chips will look like, guys. Here, 
uh, that you're going to be doing. Those are just basic generic cards. And um, yeah, so this is going to determine turn order. You'll put all the chips of all the players and a lot of, I forgot to show you these numbers as well. Um, because the, the boss or monster that you're fighting are going to have these different numbers and the number is going to represent a different attack. And so there'll be like a grouping of numbers where it's like, you know, 1 through 5 and then like 11 through 10 or whatever. And so you'll put these all in a bag, you'll be drawing them one at a time, and that will kind of determine um, the order of who's going to go and things like that. Um, these are just some more cards, again, that you'll be putting on. So all of these cards, like you see here, like a weak card. What's the other one? Stunned, Stunned and trap. Stunned and trap. So again, these will all go on this section of the board right here. So stun, trap, you got the armor cards, exhaust. They hurt, yeah, these yeah. are all, all in. Yep, so that is all of that. But this is the initial um, welcome box, which has the map and then some components uh, that you are going to put together. So that is the awesome little quick start welcome box with a felt, with a felt little, uh, a thing over there. Okay, so now get into the actual box itself. So here again is where I This is where I think the game is really shined and why I decided to get the game because obviously Gloomhaven is a big production Okay, um, what they have decided to do is all they have made all of this stuff very accessible quick and easy setup so if you can see in the box here they have 21 different scenarios in the game but all of the different scenarios are prepackaged in its own little box. So I'm not going to take anything out of these scenario boxes because we don't want to spoil any of these scenarios. But like this is quest number 10, Starless. But everything for quest number 10 is in this little portfolio box. And it's going to have all of it. So when you're ready to do this quest, take out the box, open all the components. When you finish it, you put it right back in, in the in this little uh, portfolio and you slide it right in here just like this. So very quick, very easy, uh, very accessible, okay? Uh, some of the other things in the box is, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the characters. So the same thing with characters, each character is going to have their own specific box um, just like this. All the components for the characters and cards are in the box. So whenever you're ready to play that character, you just take the character out. Whenever you're finished, you put all the components back in the box. So uh, the first character is gonna be Asha. Uh, she is an elven rogue, all right? I'll let's see her and take a look. And I, I think we'll open a box of one of the characters and show you in there should be cards and uh, like an acrylic standee. Do you want me to show them or are you going to another box? Uh, what, what do you want to do first? Um, go through them all and then I'll pick the box, please. Yeah, you'll pick the box. So we had Asha of Brillbrook in Elven Rogue. We have Valora Helsman, who is a human archer. All right. We have uh, Fane Longstride. He is a human bar. All right. Kind of looks like Bob Marley a little bit. Um, all right. We have... Uh, Nas of the Wind Strikes, an Orcus strategist. All right, we have Kor. Uh, just Kor, just Kor. He is a revenant tank. All right, and he's got a cute little moth, moth buddy, as a as a companion. And then the last one we have here is Roland, Roland Ward, Word Forger. He is a dwarven sorcerer. All right. Those are the six characters that come in the game here. And so, like I said, in each box, we'll have Sierra choose a character that we want to highlight and take a look at, and we'll open the box and show all the components. I want to see Corey's little mock buddy. <laughs> so what's funny is this is actually the character that I want to play <laughs> during the box. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, we'll move I this box. I thought you wanted to be him. We'll move this box up here for a sec, and we'll go ahead and take a look at Core and uh, show you the components in here. So each, um, each character is gonna have a dual layer board, uh, a slot for his cards, some information about the character, and then there'll be a little dial that we will put together. I'll go ahead and show you guys what this board is gonna look like right there. So dual layered front side, 
back side of the board, just kind of some cool little artwork and components for core. So there's his little moth buddy right there. And I'll hot show that over to Sierra. All right, next you're gonna have the acrylic standee here. And of course we have a nice little note that says there is a protective film on the acrylic uh, standee itself. So you will have to remove that. We'll go ahead and jump over to the, uh, to the camera here and show you guys what that's gonna look like. So there is the back side of Core and his moth, and there's the little front side. You got his cute little moth right up there on his shoulder or his arm, it looks like. So this is the acrylic standee. Each character will have their own acrylic standee. And then of course, here's the bottom, the bottom of that standee uh, right there. So we'll just put it together, all right. And then each character is gonna have a deck of cards uh, that is specific to them that are going to have um, different effects, different abilities, and different powers. So a basic stack of 18 cards. Show these some of these cards right over here. Just a little quick sneak preview for some of these little cards. All right. The last thing uh, in the main box is this little treasure trove here. And I actually took it out. But this is going to be like a little treasure box, I'm assuming here. And this is just gonna have some extra packs uh, in the game. So for example, you'll have, uh, let me just see if I can start pulling stuff out here, guys. Um, so you'll have these little packs, booster packs of cards. Um, and so when you're doing quests, kind of like upgrades, um, well, th this might here, uh, I'll have to take a look at the rule, but this might be like a level up pack. So I believe what they've done is obviously, you know, it's a campaign game. And so like if me and you start a campaign and we invite a friend over, uh, like let's say we're like four or five scenarios into the game, we can't just start that new player that we introduce over at one, right? So they have these little quick start, everything is nice and compact. I was gonna say, it fits tight in there. <laughs> it's nice and snug. Let me take some of these, uh, some of this stuff out. So. Uh, these are packs of cards. I believe this blue is the level up boxes. So like four, so if our character's level four, three if our character's level three, and each there'll be cards in here to buy understanding that pertain to each character, I believe. So that way, if another character comes in, you can jump in and we can get them that way. But they'll have silver or platinum uh, loot boxes or loot cards or something like that. You got bronze and you got gold. Again, my understanding, don't quote me on this, my understanding is all of these, you'll be able to open these throughout the course of the campaign to add more cards to your deck and kind of level up um, some of your abilities, okay? Uh, what do we have here? This is gonna be, uh, I think these are going to be the map cards. Whenever you visit the town, uh, you will have different uh, scenarios and then um, something like this as well. You know how like in Gloomhaven you had like the little uh, map scenarios or like the, the town scenarios you would go in there and do something and then this is the other town Vena So I, I believe there was two towns you could visit Vena and then uh, Dinlux are the two towns So these are these scenario cards that you'll read and kind of enc or encounter cards is what we would we like to call them uh, The void box. I have no idea what this void box is. Looks like you would drop the little Yeah and tokens in for something. Yeah, drop some of the little tokens in there. But yep, these are where all these cards, again, we're not gonna open any of these because this is definitely gonna spoil uh, some of the stuff that has to do with the campaign. But I liked how they made, again, I like how everything is nice, easy, and accessible. And then it really is very easy for you to bring somebody into the game even though you have started these campaigns, we just bust out the level box. Here, take a look at some of these cards. You can get some of these cards for you and uh, they can be on par with you right away. All right, well look, that is basically everything that comes in the core box. All right. Um, setting that in there. That is everything in the core box and uh, We'll actually wait to put all this stuff back in because it's probably going to take us a while. But this is everything that comes in the core box of Kinfire Chronicles. has everything uh, that you need. Um, well, I think that weapon box will go on top. But we'll go ahead and push this to the side shortly. And then the last thing we're going to take a look at here is the upgrade kit. Um, 
the Sierra Bus, the upgrade kit open. So basically in the upgrade kit, um, it's going to come with all of the uh, bosses um, that you're going to be fighting or the enemies or characters that you're going to be fighting in the game. In this upgrade kit, they're going to have an acrylic standee instead of a cardboard punch out standee. All right. So uh, normally um, in the base game, all the characters are just going to have generic punch outs in those little portfolio boxes, uh, cardboard punch outs. In this upgrade kit, they're all going to be acrylic standees. As well, this is going to come with six player mats for each of the characters. And then it's going to have card sleeves uh, for each of the characters to sleeve cards here. So right on top, we got the play mats uh, for each character. Let's go ahead and take a look at these uh, really quickly. And busting these out. So this looks like... We got, who is that? That is so, um, Naz. Naz yeah. So play mat for Naz. So you can see on the play mat, this is where your little seeker sheet will go. You have a lantern card that'll go there, your deck here, your discard pile here, and then any of your tokens, all right? So that is Naz's little player mat. We got uh, Fane. Fane, his player mat, and they got some cool little artwork. That's my man right there, Core, with a nice little cute little moth. Just like that, we got Asha. Asha, the Elven Road. I feel like you played her. Uh, maybe. Uh, Ballora. Bal yeah. Ballora, the Archer. And then we have the Mad Roland, Roland the Dwarf. All right, that is his play mat uh, right there. All right, the upgrade kit also. Now that I'm thinking about it, also comes with some additional stuff. So on top of the. Uh, on top of the cards and all that stuff, it also comes with metal coins uh, for the game and then this little DIY quest and things like that. So this whole box is you can make up your own quest and it has cards and stuff like that and so it teaches you how to do that. So that's what this little box is if we wanted to create our own quest, uh, which would be fun to do. Here are the metal coins. Uh, nice and uh, metallic. I'll go ahead and pass that to you as you can see. Uh, but yeah, just like a cool metallic feel. We'll put them over here for you guys. Uh, cool metallic feel to them. Oh, I lost a coin. Oh no. Um, so that is the coins. Um, this is obviously um, in this upgrade kit as well. It came with a code for the foreteller. Uh, app to do not audio narration and music and things like that when you're playing the game so if you kind of want a cool atmosphere for that um, they can narrate it for you we have some extra quests um, or extra pack uh, exclusive gold pack here uh, for cards um, these are I never understood what these were gonna be used for but I guess these are extra like variant cards is what they call them but I didn't know if they like what the purpose of it was just like a like a additional card for each character so there's Valora dressed up as the little moth um, we got a male version of Asha you got a elven rogue version of Asha female version of Fane there's an alternate version of Fane a little bit bigger you got a female version of Kor a Groot-ish looking version of Kor uh, male version of Nas, a samurai version, looking version of Nas, I don't know if we call it samurai. or a battle version, yeah. armored up version. We got a smaller version of Roland, or female version of Roland, maybe. Not female. Um, hmm. And then a sorcerer, warlock version of him, even though he is. And then a male version of Valora, and like a Pirates of the Caribbean looking version of Valora. But yeah, these are just like extra cards. Wait, they have the names on them. Debutante Sniper Valora. Oh, man. Alter Ego, that's the male one. Yeah. Soul Fury, Alter Ego, Grand Commander. That's the Okay, name. Alter Ego, Windling Guardian. Okay. Oh, I like the female version. Musical Idol. Ego, Shadow, Raven, Asha. Cool. Yep. 
So these, this was like a stretch goal. Um, again, I just, I don't know if it's just like a visual thing you could have out or things like that. These are the card sleeves uh, for each of the characters. I'll go ahead and show these over here. Um, so this is gonna be the card sleeve back for Valora. All right, the one side and the other. I'll let her take a look at that. We got the card sleeve pack for Nas for all of her cards. We got Core card sleeve pack. All right, and I do apologize for the glares here. Uh, Roland. All right. Thane. Trying to give you different angles. And then Asha. All right. Asha. So, ah. so those are all of the different card sleeve packs uh, that come in the game. And then the last thing is we have a bunch of the acrylic standees for all of the monsters and bosses uh, that you might end up encountering uh, in the game. So I think what I'll just do here is I'll just pick one and uh, just show off what you want to do this I one. See that guy. Okay, we'll go ahead and do this one and uh, just kind of show off some of these enemies and what they're gonna look like, versions of them of who uh, you will fight. And again, these are all tied to side quests and main quests uh, that you will encounter in the game. I'm gonna go ahead and put these down. Again, if it looks like they're scratchy, uh, if it looks like they're scratchy, that's because they do have that protective film um, over them. But I'm gonna go ahead and show them all off here and then maybe one at a time show them into the camera while Sierra gets a look at them. So we got this creepy looking monster here. No clue. Very, uh, this gives me like Witcher vibes. Yeah. A lot. Got a creepy looking like half skeleton looking thing. All right. Uh, oh, there's a generic, generic human right here. Thief. I wouldn't call him generic. He's huge. He's pretty swolled up. Yeah, he's a swole guy. We got a, uh, I can't think of the name. I wonder if this is like a former, like, knight, because he's got a lantern on him. Maybe he was like an ex-knight that you gotta fight. Oh, we got a little small, little, small little minion here. We got this creepy giant serpent dragon looking thing. Looks like that. A combination of a snake and that raptor from Jurassic Park. The lizard from Jurassic Park. Whoa! We got this guy with like an electric sword or what is that? Like lightning next to him? I'll have to take a look at that. Even closer. Yeah, that's like a electric blade or like a fiery flame blade. This look dude right here with a staff. Staff right there. And then finally, we have a guy with like a harpoon. All right, harpoon. So again, this is just one small little package of how many is there? One, two, three, four. Uh, a small little package of four of all these characters. Again, five. you will, total five, 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 yeah. So you will come across all of these characters throughout the course of the game. Well, you might. Uh, encounter all these characters throughout the course of the game. I'm gonna go ahead and keep this over here to the side. Uh, you'll encounter all these characters throughout the course of the game, maybe on one or two playthroughs again, because some of these are main characters that you'll be fighting over the course of the campaign. And then um, there'll be different side quests. I know there's a lot, a lot of side quests that were unlocked. Um, a lot of side quests that were unlocked during the stretch goals and then like since I backed the all in I got access to like exclusive side quests you got access to exclusive side quests uh, for the game but uh, all right well look that is everything again this is the Kimfire Chronicles all in pledge which is the base game and the nice little upgrade kit uh, right here so uh, I know that was more of me talking about the game uh, as you can guys tell, I'm really excited about this game. But let's go ahead, now that you've kind of got to see everything, kind of what are your thoughts? 
I think they did a really, really good job with like the artwork and the theme of the game. All of the boxes look like what they are supposed to be, if that makes sense. So yeah. like the treasure box looks like a little treasure box and I love how it's got the, um, the loot in their own little, um, I don't know what to call them. Little packs? Packs, yeah. yeah. So you're like randomly choosing a gold pack rather than randomly looking through them real quick and yeah. picking the one you want. Like it's actually gonna kind of be random, randomized to a degree. Um, but no, I, and it seems super organized. Like they put a lot of thought into how to make things um, as straightforward and easy as possible. Uh, I know with campaign games, that's my biggest issue. Yeah. I just hate setting up. I hate how many components there are and you constantly are looking up, well, if I do this, then what happens? Yeah, and yeah. like, how to do things, and it just, it takes, makes it way too long. That's why I typically don't like campaign games. Um, but yeah, definitely when you brought out this box and I saw it, <laughs> I was questioning why you got this, yeah. knowing how I am with these, this style game. Um, but after you explaining it and looking into it, all all of the components, I'll give it a try. Yeah. I'll try it. I'm I'm still not huge on campaign games. Yeah. Just 20 hours of the same game does not. Yeah. Well, uh, we can break it up. Excited, but yeah. Yeah. Exactly. We can like pick and choose. I mean, like you said, you can have someone jump in and with yeah. like the level up pack. Yep. So that, that's good for me. <laughs> so I don't have to play every single, single one. You can just one. pop in when you want to. Yeah. And and again, like everything that Sierra said is the reason why I backed this game and wanted to try it just for the streamlineness of, like I said, I mean like using the top of the box as like the main board. Like yeah, that's pretty cool. she said, normally with these big campaign games, for all you people know, Gloomhaven, Frosthaven, Dungeon Crawls, like I it, think they're really well done. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. It's just there's the so much. The setup, the teardown, and yeah. like what I'm finding out with a lot of games, I really don't like the like. Okay, we we're doing a scenario or like a campaign game, and then we have to stop, and I have to put more boards out, or we got to yeah. do this, or we got to do that. With here, it's just like. Bam, everything is in a nice little box. I pull the box out, I take everything out, we do a scenario, boom, everything goes back and it slides right back in and it's quick, fast, and it's easy. And like, you can get to playing the game very, very quickly. Um, even though the box does look very intimidating, I did not think the box weighed this much. Uh, this is like a 19 pound box <laughs> is what they said. Um, but yeah, I mean like, I, I, I'm hoping that she likes the, that Sierra will like the artwork and like kind of that that the it's it's not cartoony it's still like fantasy type but it's got like a cool watercolor like vibe to it almost is what I'm thinking um, maybe not but. I don't know. I'm like I don't know what you mean by all of that but I I know what you're trying to get at but. yeah. All right, guys. Well, look, this is Kimfire Chronicles Nightfall, the campaign game that is just now fulfilling. Uh, this is coming to you from Incredible Dream uh, Studios. Incredible Dream Studios right here is doing that. So we are very excited uh, to go ahead and, well, I'm very excited to bust this out and see how it goes. But as always, guys, please go ahead and drop a like on this video. If you back Kimfire Chronicles, go put it down in the comment section below and let us know, are you excited? Uh, to play it and as always uh, please go ahead and subscribe to our channel so we can keep bringing you more awesome content. All right guys so Have a great one. Bye. Bye